Korea Expressway 1. Yeah! As you can see, I'm dressed for the occasion. I've got my Kia Tigers jersey. Go Tigers! Alright everybody, we're back. I figure there probably won't be any exit requests for this one, so I'm coming to start with this one, Korea Expressway 1. It is the dominant road of South Korea. It connects eight different cities with over a million people, including three that are satellite cities of Seoul. Putting I-95 to shame, it does all this in about 250 miles or so. A lot of people have asked me why am I doing this road and not like a Canadian road to start out or international roads, and I'll tell you, I lived in Korea for several years, so I have a connection to this road. I know this road pretty well. I've spent maybe four days of my life in Canada, so I have a lot more to say about Korea than I do Canada. All right, let's take a look at the map here. We see South Korea Highway 1, the Gyeongbu Gonsukdoro, will go from Seoul to Busan, connecting Korea's two largest cities on opposite sides of the country. And you can see here from this map, Korea has a pretty in-depth freeway network as well. Highway 1 is the oldest. It was named Highway 1 because it was the first one. And originally they were numbered in the order that they were built. But in the year 2000 or so, they did a revamp and the Korea highway system is now based somewhat on the interstate highway system with even numbers going east-west, odd numbers going north-south and going from low numbers in the south to high numbers in the north and from low numbers in the west to high numbers in the east. And right now the highest east-west road is Highway 60. They did it that way in case there's ever reunification so that there are room for roads in North Korea. You're watching Control City Freak. This is the YouTube channel where we talk about interstate highways and the places that they're signed to go to and other highways too. If you dig this kind of content, why not give us a like? And if you really like it, why not subscribe? Yeah, subscribe. Appreciate all the views during my break. It's great to be back, everybody. I should also let you know you can request an exit or an intersection for US highways for a $5 super sticker. We're doing a gimmick video next week that I don't think we're gonna have any requests for, but in two weeks, I will be doing a reboot of I-4, and in three weeks I will be covering US-52. So if you have any requests for those two roads, please send those my way, and I will let you know other roads that we will be covering in future videos. Like in America, the north-south roads are numbered starting from the south, but we start in Seoul, so we're starting with southbound. We're gonna go backwards down this road. This is the Hanam Bridge. It crosses the Han River near downtown Seoul, heading toward Gangnam, and we get our first signs for Highway 1. And right at the beginning, we see it is signed for Busan at the very end, so that's quite a swing there. The side of the river, we're gonna have an intersection for Gangnam Dedo, the big street of Gangnam. Open Gangnam Star! To Yangjae Station and Shinza Station, and we will be taking Highway 1 to Busan. Here at the actual interchange, we do see Busan written in Korean there on the pavement. So that's pretty interesting that we have Busan written there. It'd be kind of like if they had certain lanes of the Lincoln Tunnel listed for Los Angeles. Uh, it is quite a swing for here. And then the other one says Shinsayuk, which is just the next subway station down. We are on Highway 1, although officially this is an urban expressway. We aren't on the real Highway 1 quite yet. And we have our first exit for the express bus terminal, which actually is where I lived when I first lived in Seoul. Here we are in the express bus terminal area and we are crossing a tunnel that we can't see that I used to walk through quite frequently to get from my first apartment to Gangnam to, you know, go to restaurants and bars and whatnot. Open Gangnam Star. This is the Yangjae intersection and this is right where the actual start of the real Highway 1 starts. It's a toll road after this as all the major Korean expressways are. And we see here a Costco. This for a long time this was the busiest Costco in the world. World, although I don't know if that is true anymore. Heading down Highway 1, we get our first major expressway intersection. It is 171. And I should note here that Korea does this kind of the opposite way of the US. This is not a spur route of Highway 71. It is actually a spur route for Highway 17. So that's what they do. They put the regular two digit road first and then a one or a two or whatever after that. We don't have an exit for Highway 100, but on Highway 100 here, we see we are now signed on one for day 
Daejeon instead of Busan. And I think this is kind of a good move. I think Daejeon is actually the way to go. Daejeon has about a million and a half people, so it's pretty big. It's in the center of the country. All of the zero, zero three-digit routes are city loops. So in Seoul, it has the oldest city loop, so 100 is its name, but there are several other X00 numbers in Korea that are all just city loops. Here's another exit for Boondong. If you get off here, you have to pay a toll. And we see we have a sign on it now. This is exit 47. It is not only 47 kilometers to Busan, so we learn quickly that Korea does ordinal numbers instead of kilometer-based numbers. Can't say I'm too much a fan of that. We've got our toll gate coming up here, and we see there are lanes for high pass, which is the Korean version of easy pass. And here is our very large Seoul toll gate at the beginning of the toll section of Highway 1. You're not actually in Seoul here, you're in Sungnam. And here's what it looks like from overhead. It is pretty big. I've definitely been stuck in a number of traffic jams here, although I've usually been on the bus and you can see there are bus lanes in the middle there, which is pretty well done. Here's our first two-digit XO road that we were meeting, Highway 50. As I noted before, there is a Highway 60, but it is north of where Highway 1 starts. And 50 is signed for Wanju, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere ish in Gangwondo, and Incheon, which is a major city itself. It's the home of Seoul's airport, and it has around 3 million people. Next up, we're going to be meeting an intersection for Suwon. Suwon has long had over a million people. It's more of a satellite city of Seoul than it is a suburb because it does kind of exist independently, but it's also on the Seoul subway line. We actually aren't in Suwon here. We are in Yongin at this point, which is another suburb with over a million people. And we see a big Daejeon pull through sign and it does make sense that they go with Daejeon as the city instead of Busan because having it be signed for Busan in downtown Seoul makes sense because you know Busan's the other big city it's a big draw but taking highway one is actually not the fastest way to Busan it's much simpler to take other expressways to go to Busan they go a lot more directly you'd be taking several different numbered roads instead of just one all the way and we see route 400 which is also a ring road it is the second ring road of Seoul it is not complete yet. Now we're getting an exit for Osan and Songtan, which is a place near and dear to my heart. It is where the U.S. Air Force Base is located, and I had several friends who were stationed in the Air Force there, so I used to go there and hang out with them quite a bit. Cool spot. At random interchanges, we are getting one north for Seoul and one south for Daejeon. We meet our next major expressway, not too far down the road, 40, and it is signed for West Pyeongtaek and Umsong. Pyeongtaek is a fairly large city, and it's also the home of the largest U.S. Army base in Korea, and I think the largest U.S. Army base overseas anywhere now, because they just doubled its size fairly recently. Here we are coming toward Cheonan. Cheonan's got kind of a nice entrance to it. We get the lake and that nice bridge there. I lived there for a time as well. And here's our exit for Cheonan, Highway 20. Which I never really knew what it was. <laughs> I usually just took the bus, like I said, or I drove a motorbike, but you can't drive motorbikes on these freeways. In Chunon, we have a major junction with 25. Highway 25 is going to be going more or less down the west coast of Korea, while one will cross over the breadth of the country and end up on the east side. 25 is the Honam Road, is what they call it, and it goes to the larger cities of Gwangju, Jeonju, and Sejong, which is the new kind of artificial capital where they have moved a lot of government offices away from Seoul. Here's our actual split for 25. 25, so we're getting 25 and its laundry list of cities, and we are getting one just for Daejeon. I feel like if you're having a bunch of cities for 25, you could have a bunch of cities for one. You could put Daejeon, Daegu, Gumi, Gyeongju, Busan, many others on there as well. But here we are. A little bit south of that, we meet another freeway. We get 32. So they've got an I-32. We don't. Interesting. And that is signed for East Seoul because it'll connect back with 35 that'll take you north to the eastern side of Seoul and for Ochan. See, the other reason I want to do Korea instead of Canada is because in Canada, just like in Hawaii, I know the big ones. You know, I know like the New Yorks and Chicagos of the thing, but I don't necessarily know like the Columbuses of Canada, and I certainly don't know like the Peorias. And in Korea, I do know the Columbuses and the Peorias of Korea. I even know a lot of the Limans of Korea. Here's our one exit for Cheongju. There's been no mention of Cheongju so far on this road, but Cheongju, 
has 800,000 people in it. It's not a small place. So this is the intersection for Chengju and Sejong. We meet 30 here, and 30 is signed east for Sangju and Bone. I don't really know those places. Those are pretty small. One is still signed for Daejeon. Interestingly, we are on 1 and 35 at this point. We had 35 come in from the north and connect into us, but it was a Y intersection, so we didn't have access to it. And 30 is actually joining here too, so in theory it should be three roads that are signed but they don't sign 30 or 35, they only sign one. And you can see at random interchanges, 30 and 35 are nowhere to be seen, just one for Seoul and Chengju and for Daegu and Shintanjin. So we're in the Daejeon area now, so our controlled city switches to Daegu. Daegu is a very large city, it's two and a half million people or so. We are meeting where 30 exits one, and 30 is signed for Dangjin and Sejong, places in Chungnamdo. 251 for Jeonju, so Remember, I said the three-digit roads are two digits and then the spur thing instead of the other way around. This is a spur of Highway 25, and we already saw Highway 25 before, and we know Highway 25 goes to Junju. So this road will connect back to Highway 25. Here is where 35 finally leaves. It is signed for Muju, and 300 is the ring road around Deja. One is signed here for Daegu. We see in the foreground a kilometer sign. We are at kilometer 198.6, so that is signed all along the way. You can count down the kilometers as we go. This road is about 400 kilometers long, so this is right around the halfway point, and that's 250 miles. We're in the interior of Korea a bit, so now we are meeting 45, and 45 is signed for Chungju, where a buddy of mine just moved to, like yesterday, and for Changwon, which is another city that is over a million people has their own baseball team, pretty big place. It's hard to find the mileage signs, I had to just kind of get lucky, but I happen to look back at this one. So we see going the other direction, going northbound, Daejeon, 103 kilometers. Kimcheon Bungi Jum is 14 kilometers, and Gumi, 3 kilometers. So we're just south of Gumi here. And you can see they do it the opposite way of what we do in the US, where the primary control and the furthest place away is listed first, and then the secondaries are listed after that. We are meeting the intersection for South Gumi, Gumi, one of the larger cities in Korea that I've never been to, and you see there's this giant curve in Gumi. This definitely would not be interstate standard, this particular curve. You cross the Nakdong River, that is the largest river in South Korea, kind of divides the east from the west for much of its run. And now we're meeting North 55 for Andong, and 451 for Changwon, so as we know, 451 will connect with 45 to go to Changwon. And one is now signed for Busan, and I think it's okay to sign it here now, but hang on to that. Here's about the best view we have of Daegu. Other than Seoul, none of these freeways actually really go into the city at all. They all kind of skirt around the city and there will be some kind of spur into town, but it won't be one of the major numbered highways, which, you know, is really the better way to do it and probably what we should have done to begin with. And we see we're getting pretty far south now because we're on 20. We know we're in the south, we're, in, we're on 20. 20 is signed for Pohong and Palgongsan, and one is signed for Busan. Here's where the problem lies. Now one is signed for Busan, and we're meeting 55 south, and 55 south is signed for West Busan and Miryang. Miryang A never should be signed ever. Don't look it up, but it shouldn't be signed. Busan should be the primary on 55 south because not just West Busan, it is faster to get anywhere in Busan by taking 55 by a considerable margin then taking one so we'll look at the map right here we see one right at the top there going through Daegu and 55 right kind of in the center and you see 55 makes a beeline right down to Busan whereas one swings out to Gyeongju and goes well out of the way it's probably an extra 30 minutes if you want to stay on one so signing Busan here is not a good idea Here's our exit for Gyeongju, and Gyeongju is the old traditional capital of Korea from the Shilla dynasty. It's a pretty cool town, it's sort of like the Kyoto of Korea. There's a lot of cool temples and museums and whatnot. And at random interchanges we are getting South Busan and North Daegu. Once we get to Gyeongju, I think signing Busan is okay, but before Gyeongju, it should just be signed Gyeongju or Ulsan. We are in Ulsan now. Ulsan is also a large city with over a million people, and we are getting an intersection for 16, because we're south of 20 now, so we're getting 16 for Ulsan. And interestingly, they have 65 up on this as well. 65 is the easternmost highway in 
Korea, and it is signed for Hyundai and Pohang. 65 is not at this intersection. You have to go a ways down 16 before you get to 65, but so it's cool that they mentioned 65. Also, Hyundai is not a city. It is a neighborhood in Busan, a beach area. Pretty nice area. And now where you're meeting 14, a little bit south of 16, we get one for Busan, and it should be one for Busan at this point. And now we're meeting 551, so as we know, that will take us back to 55, and it'll take you to West Busan by way of 55. At this point, you are better off staying on one to get to Busan, though. And we enter the city limits of Busan, and we get the Ring Road 600, the Busan Ring Road, and we are at exit two, so we're almost done. We're getting the Nopo intersection, Nopo Dong. This is where the large Busan bus station is. If you were to take the bus to Busan, this is where the bus would be exiting, although I've never once taken the bus to Busan. I always took the train. We get Asia Highway 1. They're showing that this Highway 1 is part of Asia Highway 1, which is maybe the longest highway in the world. It, goes through several countries. They list Japan, Korea, China, India, Turkey, but it also goes through Thailand, Vietnam, several others. It is a monster. It goes all the way from Istanbul to Tokyo. Here is the Busan toll gate. It is not as large as the Seoul toll gate because, you know, there's not the suburban sprawl in Busan the way there is in Seoul. There's not as many people down here. And finally, we get to exit one. We have the option of Hyundai and Bexco, which is the Busan exhibition hall thing, or 61 for Dongne, which is uh, another neighborhood in Busan. The Gyeongbu Gosokuro is going to be ending in one kilometer, and lo and behold, it does end at this stoplight here in Busan. Although you'd have to go continue on city streets for quite a ways to get to actual downtown Busan. This seems to be a pretty lively area of town though. All right, let's take an abbreviated look at northbound Highway 1. So here we are near that stoplight on that road and we see Gyeongbu Expressway 1 turn right. And at that first exit we get 11 for Hyundai and 1 is signed for Daegu from the beginning. Again, I don't know if Daegu would be the best thing to sign because you're going to be better off going through town and getting on the 55 to go to Daegu. We probably should have Ulsan or Gyeongju signed here. Here we're getting a more severe Seoul and Ulsan, so that's probably the way to do it, Seoul and Ulsan, because it's not the fastest way to Daegu from this particular point, although it's not the fastest way to Seoul either. We're meeting 600, and now we are getting one is signed for Yangsan, which is kind of a weird one. I have been to probably over 50 cities in Korea. I've traveled all over the place, and even I've never heard of Yangsan, so that's a weird one to have on an overhead sign. Here we are. In the Daegu area, so now we're getting one north for Daejeon, and we get 451, the 45 spur, and 55 for Changwon and Andong. This is a fairly typical rest area sort of thing. I decided to just take a picture of this particular one, but they all look fairly similar. There'll be a bunch of shops, restaurants, bathrooms, whatnot, usually a gas station. Jumping past Daejeon, we are having the split between 1 and 35, so 1 is signed for Seoul and 35 for East Seoul. So that takes you to the east side of town in Seoul. One takes you into more central Seoul. Here is 400 again, and we can see that it's a pretty big road here. Light traffic day, I never see it look like that. Here we are coming to the Seoul toll gate once again, and we see there are a lot of businesses and buildings set up right here in this part of Bundang. Going northbound, we do have an intersection with 100, southbound we didn't, and we see 100 is going to be signed for Ilsan and Guri. Ilsan is also another suburb with over a million people. Pretty low speed limits here. This is actually usually what the speed detection things look like too. This one I think is not one because it doesn't seem to have the radar looking things, but maybe it is. Generally, you don't see a lot of police on these highways in Korea. You just see gantries like this. So I have actually driven on them a little bit and you notice when you see the gantry coming, everybody starts slowing down because that's what's checking your speed. We are meeting the Yangjie intersection shortly here. So Guachan and Yangjie. This is the farthest south intersection in the city of Seoul and actually officially the end of Highway 1 because as I said it becomes Urban Highway something other after that but everybody still calls it Highway 1. After Yangjie we meet the Socho IC. IC stands for interchange and lots of other stuff coming up ahead. Here is the last exit on 1, the Banpo intersection which is also where the express bus terminal is. We see going this way it's for Gangnam Dedo and for Coex Mall. And going the other way on the Banpo intersection, it is where the express bus terminal is. So most of the time I've ever been on Highway 1, I've been on a bus. So this is where it gets off to go to the bus terminal. Looking at the overpass right here, we can see a little of the Gangnam skyline. Not the better part of it, but 
at the better parts of it there's a big wall right next to the freeway so you can't really see anything that is the Kyobo bookstore Kyobo tower there in the Kyobo bookstore and hilariously they also have a bathroom there with a plaque saying it was the number one toilet in all of Seoul in 2000 I feel like they've let it slip since then we're coming to the end of the freeway and we see we're gonna have options for Olympic Expressway and for the Hanam Bridge here we are crossing over the Gangnam Grand Avenue, Gangnam Dido. We will merge onto that to go north onto the bridge, but here we are looking south into Gangnam. And right in the foreground there is a hotel where a buddy of mine got married, so that was cool. And here's what it looks like as we go on to the Gangnam Dido as we head toward the bridge. We have options to get on the Olympic Expressway. There are two expressways that go along the river. The Olympic on the south, which goes to the Olympic Stadium from the 1988 Olympics, and the Gangbyeon Expressway on the north side of the river. Here is the Han River itself. I have walked across this bridge and been across it, driven across it, taken buses across it many, many, many times. See Seoul Tower in the background there, and Namsan, uh, the mountain sort of mountain in the center of town here are exits for the gangbyeon expressway as i said it's the one that is on the north side of the river and we see if we go straight we have namzan one tunnel and city hall so interestingly we are kind of on city streets now but because of this flyover we can still continue unabated there have not been any stoplights yet so you could have driven all the way from busan up through here without hitting a stoplight here's our turn off for Itaewon Station. I definitely spent lots of time in Itaewon back in the day. And we head into the tunnel, the Namsan 1 tunnel. This tunnel goes under Namsan Hill. And here's our toll booth for the tunnel. We gotta pay two bucks, 2001. And continuing further down, when we almost get to downtown Seoul, we finally get our first stoplight. So we will stop there now that we've gone stoplight to stoplight. All right, let's take a look at Todd's the way it should be for Korea Expressway 1. I'm going to say southbound. It should be Busan. I like that Busan in the beginning like they do, but then switching to Daejeon is the right move. Then Daegu, then Busan until you get to that 55 junction, and then I think it should be Gyeongju after that. That's a major tourist draw. And then after Gyeongju, Ulsan, Busan. You may as well throw Ulsan up there. It's got a million and a half people. And then finally Busan. Northbound, I would say Gyeongju, and then from Gyeongju, I'd say Daegu then Daejeon, then Seoul, which is the way they do it now. All right, thank you so much for watching this episode of Control City Freak. I really appreciate it. And we will be back next week, like I said, with a gimmick, but in two weeks, I4 Reboot. So if you've got any Orlando, Tampa, Daytona Beach style exit requests, send them my way. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. My name's Todd. Until next time, keep on trucking.